hallelujah. We just thank you, hallelujah. Do we have any uh, spoken requests on this morning? Hallelujah. Sherry. Happy birthday! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many blessings, many blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a comforter. I know that firsthand. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone else? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone else? Hallelujah. Come on, let's just begin to worship the Lord in this place on this morning. Hallelujah. Father God, you're worthy, Lord God, and we praise you on this morning, Lord God. Father, we can't do it without you, Father God. We need you, Lord God, hallelujah. Father, nor do we want to do this without you, Lord God, hallelujah. Father, we die out to flesh, Lord God, hallelujah, that you may be glorified on this morning, Lord God, hallelujah. We just thank you, Father. We thank you for bringing us here once again, Lord God, together, together, Lord God, in love, oh God, hallelujah. We thank you for your peace, Lord God. We thank you for your joy, Lord God. We thank you that you care about us, oh God, hallelujah, that you come to see us, oh God, right where we are, Father God, in the midst of whatever it is that is going on with us, Lord God. Father God, hallelujah, we lift Annette up to you on this morning, Lord God. We pray that you would cover her, Lord God. Hallelujah, that you would bring comfort, Lord God, hallelujah. Whatever it is, Lord God, you know how to fix the situation, Lord. And we thank you for that on this morning, Lord God, hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord God, hallelujah. And to Jaden, to the Hamiltons, Lord God, hallelujah. Father God, we ask that you would be in that situation, Lord God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, Father God, that you may get the glory, that you may be praised, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for all the birthdays of this month, Lord. We thank you for all the people that are here, Lord God. All that you have blessed, oh God, and brought together once again, Father God, we give you praise for it, Lord God. Now have your way in this place, Lord God, hallelujah. Be lifted up, oh God, hallelujah. Help us to praise you from the depths of our souls, oh God, hallelujah. You deserve the glory. You deserve the praise, oh God, and we just lift you up in this place on this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Let your peace, oh God, hallelujah. Just let it sit upon us this morning, Lord God, hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We call upon our great King, hallelujah. Ah, to no one else can we look, but we can look to you, Father God, because we know that you love us, Lord God, hallelujah. And we know that we can always find an answer in you, Lord God, hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord God. Now bless our bishop on today, Lord God, as he travels, Lord God, to hear, Lord God. Give him traveling mercies and grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we wait in expectation, Lord God, for the word that you have for us today, Lord God, hallelujah. Let it break chains, oh God. Let it lift spirits, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let it come forth as a saving word, Lord God, hallelujah. Father God, and for my sister's family, Lord God, God. You're the only one that can save, Lord God, so we commend them to your hands, Lord God. Do as only you can, Father God. Lead them, guide them, Lord God. Show them the way, Father God, and we will be grateful, Lord God. We will praise your name for it, Father God, and we give you the praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're happy to be in the house of God this morning, come on and give him some praise. 
He's worthy. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're glad about it, come on and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. God be lifted on this morning. He be lifted up this morning. We lift you up this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. For another opportunity to praise your holy name. We lift you up. Hallelujah. You are high and lifted up. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody, and praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift your name on high. Hallelujah. We draw all men, hallelujah, unto you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift your name on high this morning. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Song says, Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. Help me say. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. Say, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. I'm so glad. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it I'm again. I'm so glad you came to save us. Say, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your I love praises. To sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from hell. You came from hell to us. Show. To show the way from the earth to the cross. My death you paid from the, from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Put your hands together like this. Come on, sing it again. Say, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to I see, love your, to see your praises. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to save us. Say, Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. And Lord, I'm so glad. Lord, I love to sing your I'd praises. I love to sing your praises. So glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth. Show the show way, the way from the earth to the cross. My dead, my dead, dead you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. Sing it again. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show, show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead, you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven, hallelujah. You came from heaven to earth yes. to show 
the top. Hallelujah. Here we go. Say, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so life. glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. So one more time, say. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you came now to Now with a loud voice, come on. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to show, to show, to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead, my dead. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven, you came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my dead you pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my dead to pay. Yes. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing it again, one more time. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, cross. my dead to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing it from the tops of your lungs. Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing it again. Lord, I lift your name on high. 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 Now put your hands together like this. Come on. Let's bless his name. Come on. If you can say this, hey, so I lift your name, but 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 I praise your name. 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 But I love 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 your name. But I lift 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 your name. Put your hands together. Come on. One more time. Hallelujah. But I lift your name. 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 Higher. Higher. Put your hands together. Higher. Higher. Put your hands together. But I lift your name. 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 Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to save us. One more time. Us. Say, Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. I'm so glad. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad. 
I'm so glad you came to now, come save on and praise him. Hallelujah. Come on and lift him. Come on and lift him. Hallelujah. If you love his name, come on and shout to God. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. How many came to lift up the name of yes. Jesus this morning? How many know that there's nobody like our God? Come on, look towards heaven and say, there's nobody like you, Lord. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, there's nobody like you, Lord. Yes. Now put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, everybody clap for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. You sit high on the throne, Jesus. You're mighty. You're holy. You're wonderful. There's nobody like you, God. Hallelujah. We declare that this morning. Come on and sing with us. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Come on and sing. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Come on and say, our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Say, our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Who is strong and mighty? Our God. Seated on the throne. Say, our God. High above the heavens. Our God. He is God alone. Say, our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Yeah. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Say nobody like our God. Say nobody like our God. Yeah. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Who is strong and mighty? Our God seated on the throne, say, Our God high above the heavens. Our God, He is God alone. Say, Our Lord, our Lord, who reign. There's nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Say, Our Lord, our Lord, who reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. There's nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Yeah. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like so God. we say, oh, 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 let the redeemed, let the redeemed begin to say. Like our God. Say, 
about the Bible talks about how amazing heaven is going to be. They talk about the streets of gold. Hallelujah. And the pearly gates. Hallelujah. And I thank God that God made a made such an amazing beautiful place for when this here life is over and all our struggles are over we get to you know go to such an amazing place. But how many can testify to say I don't care if ain't none of that there. As long as you're there Jesus. As long as I can be in your presence, oh God, that's all that matters to me. So if I li I'm living my life to live again, every day of my life I'm living just so that I can see you. I want to try to get everything right down here so that I can get up there. But it's not about the it's not about the gates. It's not about the streets of gold. It's not about the many mansions. Although those things are wonderful, I just want to be in your presence, Jesus. Hallelujah! How many feel that way? Come on, say, Lord, as long as you're there, that's all that matters to me. Come on, lift your hands and say, as long as you're there. As long as you're oh, there. God, that's all that matters to me. Hallelujah. Yeah, my Lord. The song is easy. It says, I'm not thinking about the sights. Yeah. I won't be there to enjoy the view. Oh, Lord, yeah. I think heaven will be all right. As long as you're there. As long as there is you, yeah. Easy, say. I'm not thinking about the sights. Oh, my Lord. I won't be there to enjoy the view. Yeah, Lord. I think heaven will be all right. As long as you're there. 
as long as there is you. Can you say that? Say, I'm not thinking about the size. Come on. I'm not thinking about the size. I won't be there to enjoy the view. I won't be there to enjoy the view. Yeah, I think heaven will be all right. I think heaven will be all right. Just as long as you're there. Just as long, long as you're there. there. As long as there is you. As long as there is you. Everybody say, I'm not thinking about I'm not thinking about the sights. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful, but Don't I'm not there. there to enjoy the view. I think heaven will be all right. I think heaven will be all right. Just as long as you're there. As long as there is you, come on and say it like you mean it. I'm not thinking about I'm not thinking about the sights. I won't be there to enjoy the view. Yeah, I'll be there to enjoy the view. Come on, say I think heaven will be alright. Heaven will be alright. Just as long as you're there, Lord. As long as, as, long as there is you, yeah. as as you. say I'm not thinking about the sights. I'm sure it's gonna be wonderful, but I'm not gonna there. Be there to enjoy the view. Hallelujah! I just wanna make it in your presence, I Jesus. I just wanna right. behold your face, oh Lord. As long as you're there, oh yeah. As long as you. Come on, sing it again. Say, I'm not thinking about. I'm not thinking about the sight. Hallelujah! I won't be there. but I'm gonna tell you about it again imagine everybody know what babies are like right yeah. so you got a playpen or a crib or whatever you got the baby in the crib the baby in the playpen and the baby's crying but you don't understand why the baby's crying because the baby got all these toys and all this stuff in the in the bed it's like well what's wrong with you you're not hungry you're not wet you got your toys what's going on and then they do this because they want you to pick them up. Because it's like, I don't want all of that. All of this is cool, and this is nice, but I just want you. I just want you. How many feel that way about Jesus? God, I just want you. Everything else is great. Everything else is amazing, and I thank you for it. I thank you for it, but God, all I need is you. All I need is you. Can you lift your hands up? Come on, everybody lift your hands up and say, Lord. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, Lord, as long as you're here, that's all that matters. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, as long as I got you, that's all that matters. Say, as long as you're there, Jesus. As long as you're there, Jesus. Come on, I'm not thinking about. I'm not thinking about the sights. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful, but. Won't be there to enjoy the view. I think heaven will be all right, yo. I think heaven will be all right. Just as long as you're there. As long as you're there, as long as you're there, as long as I can touch you, as long as I can feel you, as long as I can feel your embrace, Jesus, as long as you're there, to behold your glory, to behold your glory, to behold your glory, as long as you're there, as long as you're there. As long as I got you, Jesus. As long as you're right there. Say, as long as you're there. As long as you're there. 
When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Yeah, Lord. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout. That's what my mama would say. Come on, can y'all say that? Say, when we all yeah, get to heaven, get to heaven. What a day. What a day and of rejoicing that will be When we are When we all see Jesus We will sing and shout the victory Can you sing it again? Come on, say When we all get to heaven we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing What a day of rejoicing that will be Say when we Come on, everybody, when we all get to heaven, when we all come on, sing it like you mean it. Just think about it. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Say, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. I'm not thinking about the sight. I won't be there to enjoy the view. Come on. Won't be there to enjoy the view. Yeah. See, I think heaven will be. I think heaven will be all right. Just as long as you're there. As long as you're there. As long as there is you. As long as there is you. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Say, I'm not thinking about. I'm not thinking about the sight. Yeah. I won't be there won't to be enjoy there the view. To enjoy the view. Yes. Just as long as you're there, as long as you're there, as long as you're there, oh God, we want you, Jesus. Oh God, we need you, Lord. As long as you're there, as long as you're there, I'm going to be all right, Jesus. Just as long as I got you, Lord. As long as you're right there, as long as you're right there. As long as you're there, as long as you're there, as long as you're right there, as long as you're 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 right there, as long as you're there, as long as there is you. Now, can you lift your hands up? Come on, because the song is talking about heaven. How many are living your life to live again? Come on, just to hear, well done, well done, well done. My good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to live a life, oh God, that pleases you, Jesus. I want to live a holy life. I want to hear, yeah. well done, well done, well done, well done. My good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands up. Come on, say, God, make me over. Uh-uh, you got to say it like you mean that thing. Close your eyes. Come on, say, Lord, whatever it is that I've done, yes. I repent right now in the name of Jesus. Say, God, moving forward, let me be holy. God, moving forward, let me talk like you. I don't want to get this close to you and miss heaven. I don't want to get this close and miss God. God, make me holy. Make me anointed. God, let somebody be saved because they see my life as an example. God, I want to live like you. I want to walk like you. I want to talk like you. I want to be like you. Hallelujah. As long as when I get up there, you say, come on in. You don't turn me away, Jesus. That's all I care about. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you. And we talk about it all the time about not praying for material things. But when you really for real think about how important it is to live a holy life. Like when we say... That's the most important thing. And then, of course, some people give you the side eye. Because they're like, yeah, well, you got a car. Yeah, well, you got, I understand, but I didn't always have a car. I didn't always have the house that I, there are things that I am still praying for. But if God don't do none of that, if God say no to all of that, for whatever reason, I don't know the reason, whatever it is, don't you slay me yet will I trust you. 
and you got to believe that thing. And you got to really, really stand to his promise. Amen. So if God says no to everything, I just want to be holy. Hallelujah. I just want to live right. I just want to live right. I just want to live right. Bishop Hamilton talks about back in the day, they used to scare us and talking about hell, right? You're going to live your life in, in, in eternity, in hell and fire. And even though that's, that's, that's for real, because forever goes for, it's no, there's no tomorrow. It's no next week. It's forever. And even though those things are true, that shouldn't be your only driving force. What about God? I want to make you happy. What about God? I want you to be pleased with my life. God, I want to be holy. God, if you don't do anything, God, I just want to live like you told me to live. I want to be obedient. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Come on, everybody. And close your eyes, and I'm serious. Come on, don't think about who you came with. Don't think about what you got on. Come on, close your eyes and say, Lord. Come on, for real, because somebody, this is their last time. This is your last chance to get it right. I don't want nobody to miss it. I don't want nobody to not experience how amazing God is. Because somebody won't make it until next week. Somebody's going to die in their sins, but God, don't let it be me. God, don't let it be me, Jesus. I just want to be holy. I want to live like you. God, I want to hear well done. I want to hear well done. I want you all to say this. Say, Lord, I repent for everything. And say, God, make me over right now. And give me a mind to want to live holy. Give me a mind to want to live right. Give me a mind to want to live safe. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not, I'm not thinking about the facts. Yeah. Say, I won't be there to enjoy the view. Say, I think heaven will be all right. I think heaven will be all right. As long as you're there. As long as you're there. As long as there's you. Now come on and give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. We count it done in Jesus' name. We thank you in Jesus' name. That you're covering my life, oh God. Moving forward. Moving forward. I'm covering your blood. Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth. And give God some glory in this place. Jesus, it'll be something to push your way to church every Sunday and miss him because you're following a routine. Hallelujah. I won't be there to enjoy the view. Yes, God. I think heaven will be all right, Lord, as long as you're there, as long as there is you. I'm not thinking about the sight. Oh, Lord, I won't be there to enjoy the view. Yes, God. I think heaven will be all right, Lord, as long as you're there, as long as there is you. Can we sing it one more time? I'm not thinking about the sights. Can you say, I won't be there to enjoy the view? I won't be there to enjoy the view. Hallelujah. I think heaven will be all right. I think heaven will be all right. Just as long as you're there, Lord. As long as you're there. As long as, as, long as there is you. Come on, give God praise all over this place. Come on, the hand clap is great, but it's even better when your voice is behind it. Come on, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. Come on, you can praise until you feel him right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him till you feel better. Hallelujah. Praise him till your blood pressure is regulated. Praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, reach across that aisle. Grab somebody's hand. Does anybody feel the presence of the Lord like I do? Amen. When the Lord is in the room, anything can happen. Hmm. Yeah, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> my, my, my. Yeah, that one, that, I had a flashback. I know my mother's about ready to shout all over the place. We will sing and shout the victory. Hallelujah. Squeeze that hand. Father, we thank you. We lift your name on high. We exalt you. Lord, we, we know that everything will be better. And everything is better because you're here. Lord, we feel strength right now. We feel your anointing. We feel your presence. Lord, meet every need according to your riches and glory. You alone are worthy of all this glory, all this praise, all the honor. There is no God beside you. There is no other God before you. You stand alone. Hallelujah. And we worship you. Hallelujah. We exalt you. We magnify you. Now have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God praise, everybody. Amen. Hug somebody and tell them I'm so glad to see you. Amen. And don't leave that other neighbor out. Hug them too and tell them I'm glad to see you too. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Amen. We bless God uh, for his traveling grace and mercy. <laughs> uh, we were in Louisville, Kentucky yesterday at an awesome conference with Pastor Tim Finley, and uh, he had a, just a day, a leadership day at his church, and um, our You Can Get There From Here uh, band uh, played the second leg of our tour uh, yesterday. And uh, I thank God for being here, but now uh, my body's here. <laughs> just thought of the OJ song. Your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. <laughs> my body's here with you, but my mind is in bed at home. <laughs> but, um, you know, I thank God for how he allowed me to be here. But uh, my day, I had a very long day yesterday. Uh, so uh, it started off around 5.45, our time. And then ended the last night when I finally got home around 10.30. So, um, so if it's not spectacular, and if we do have first-time visitors, we appreciate you coming. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, um, usually I have more strength than this. So, you know, but, you know, the Lord has a way of just doing stuff. But uh, I do thank God. I'm going to give you all the word. Now, I may, I just may teach a little bit more this morning, but, uh, but I do. Uh, thank God for allowing us to be here and, um, and uh, just for how he blessed us even yesterday. It was, it was a wonderful uh, day. We had quite a few uh, leaders and, and entrepreneurs that were, we were able to pour into yesterday. So God is good. Amen. Let's run to the word of God, to Judges chapter number six. Judges chapter number six for a little while. And I ain't playing when I say a little while. 
<laughs> Amen. Judges chapter 6. And um, we'll begin reading at verse number 1. We'll read 1 through 6, and then uh, we will jump over and read 11 uh, through 24. And um, a lot of times when folks uh, preach uh, about Gideon, they you know, some would say I'm not, I'm skipping the good part, but uh, but we'll we'll bring the good part in at the end. But if it wasn't for this part, we wouldn't have the good part where the battle takes place. So Judges chapter six and verse number one. If you have it, can you say Amen? Be a good neighbor uh, this holiday weekend and share your Bible with the neighbor that came Bibleless to the house of God. Amen. Make sure they can read along with you. And the Lord and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. The hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them den the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Uh, sometimes the enemy can drive you to where you have to innovate and you have to adjust. So now they had them hiding, God's people hiding in caves and dens and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown hmm, that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. How many of y'all feel like every time you try to make some headway? Come and snatch it out of them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. All right, so they took off all, took all this stuff. For they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number. Wow. And they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Verse 7 says, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. That, and 8 says the Lord sent a prophet. Uh, we won't read that, but let's drop down to verse number 11. I'll tell you what the prophet said in a moment. There came an angel of the Lord and sat under the oak which was in Oprah, mm -hmm. that pertaineth unto Joash, the Abizirite, the son of G and the, his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Hmm. So now the trouble has got you using stuff uh, that's not that it wasn't designed for. I got to use a wine press to thresh wheat so I can hide from the enemy. I wish I had somebody that knew how to scratch and survive. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of valor, you fearlessly courageous man. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Anybody ever been there? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Look at somebody say, God ain't studying your little pity party. <laughs> Notice how the Lord just ignored him right there. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, 
then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. I just want to you know, confirm this. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come to thee and bring forth my present or my meat offering and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry here until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes and an epath of flour and the flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and he brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock, hallelujah, and pour out the broth. And he did so. And the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord just departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord or a theophany, a physical, visible manifestation of God, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Last verse, Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Oprah of the Abyssalites. Can the church say amen? I want you to lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and say, the Lord is with you. Oh, y'all didn't say it like you mean to lay, lay. I maybe try that again one more time. Lay your hand and say, the Lord is with you. And just say, Jehovah Shalom. Give God praise all over the building. Come on, give God glory. Hallelujah. It's important for us to, um, uh, first of all, um, approach uh, our walk with God um, in honest fashion. Uh, sometimes we, we like to um, sugarcoat everything. We want to make everything appear that it's okay. Uh, I mean, we want to make sure that we, we don't appear that uh, a, anything is wrong. And a lot of times we wanna, don't want to own our own uh, part or take responsibility for our part in why we're in the situation we're in. You know, God help us in here. Amen. Just stay close, man. It's just, yeah. And so we don't always want to own it. We don't always want to admit that maybe there were some things that uh, some decisions I made, there are some things that I, choices that I uh, made, uh, the roads that I took that helped lead me into this place. And, uh, but what I love about scripture, especially here in Judges, is that it's very clear that they will start off when you're dealing with a judge and say the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They would let you know right off the bat uh, that they were wrong. Oh, God help us in here. They were, that they had messed up once again. Now, if I can trouble you just a little bit, there are times where uh, when you look back and you see things that happened when you were uh, corrected by your parents or whether you had to correct your children. Uh -huh. Amen. When you did something wrong, what you did, a lot of times you, you know, they would correct you. They would check you. I, I grew up in an era where parents would check you. I'm being very nice in calling it correcting you. But they corrected you. They would, sometimes it would be a verbal warning. It would be, all right now, you know, y'all quit playing around in that TV or, you know, something of that nature. Y'all quit playing in this house. Don't be running in here. Oh, uh, y'all gonna help me? Oh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll throw a few more out at you. Uh, in or out? Now, are y'all gonna be in or out? You know, just, just, oh, I, I knew I'd find where we were. <laughs> Amen. Either you in or you out. They're gonna be come running in and out of that door now. Amen. And so those, some of those famous sayings that parents often say, you know, and 
when you had a screen door. Don't be slamming that screen now either. But you understand that they were trying to, amen, give you some warnings verbally. And then uh, they would say, now, don't, you know, don't do that. And then if they had to, they would correct you because it was clear that you weren't listening or weren't, amen, adhering to the message that was being given. So they wanted to make that message a bit clearer to you. Amen. Uh, and some of us kept getting into trouble because of a term that our parents like to use quite liberally. Uh, you are hard-headed. Amen. Uh, Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Amen. Sometimes our parents had to let us know that our head, and I, I wondered about that, you know, that term, hard-headed. And I always, as a kid, would just refer to my head. I'm like, well, you want your head to be kind of hard, but not, you know, and of course, that's my weird analysis. But they were saying you were being, amen, disobedient and stubborn. You were not listening and you weren't receiving the message, so they had to send it a bit clearer. Hallelujah. And but what's interesting is, amen, sometimes even after you show that you were actually hard headed, Amen. You'd find yourself drifting right back into the thing that they told you to leave alone. Uh, sometime, amen. All right, amen. All right. I, 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 Daryl, we are here, bro. Amen. Uh, amen. Sometimes you find yourself, you're like, well, I'm going to do what I can do, uh, I want to do anyway. Uh, and, and I will hopefully, amen, escape being found out. And that's where my father would come in with the term, oh, you think you're slick. Amen. Uh -huh. See, because sometimes, amen, there is a hard head and then you think you're slick. And then, amen, a hard head will make for a soft behind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. So you understood that there were consequences for your actions. Uh, and it seemed as if the children of Israel, after their leaders had gone off the scene, after you'd lost Moses and Joshua, Amen, and Caleb and all, and even the priests has gone off the scene, or one of the leading priests has gone off the scene, you found now that they, they would find themselves doing good one minute and then drifting off into what the Lord commanded them not to do. Amen. The Lord had told them a long time ago, amen, the first of what we call the Ten Commandments was, thou shall have no other God before me. You're not going to have any other God before me. You are not to make any graven image of any likeness of anything. You are not supposed to build up an idol and worship that. You were never supposed to do that. It's quiet in here. You were never supposed to worship any person. You were never supposed to worship any any graven image. You had, weren't supposed to worship a statue. You weren't supposed to worship an image. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Uh, he told them that right off the bat. Uh, but then you found them, amen, picking up the gods of those that the Lord had blessed them to get into the promised land. Uh, they were picking up their gods. They were taking on their attributes. They were trying to marry them. They were intermingling. Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me. Amen with these folk. And the Lord would correct them. So it was one time Amen. And this time, since they did not have the central leader like Joshua or Moses or Caleb, they now had the Lord, the Word of God. He describes them as judges, but they were actually like saviors. Some in, the, in some of the interpretations said the Lord would raise up a savior to bring them back in line. The Lord would raise up somebody that was going to lead them and get them to repent and turn back to the Lord. Hallelujah! It's very critical that you understand that the. The Lord was not just going to judge them and cut them off, but he was giving them a space of repentance, just much like our parents would give us time, amen, to get it together. My mother was not just wielding a belt 24-7, but she could get a hold of one if she had to, amen. But what she would do is they would try to get you to change your thinking. That's what repentance is. All right, you got to stop doing that now. Be careful. All right, watch it now. Uh, don't be, don't, don't don't, don't go there. Don't do that. Amen. And we're sitting there and hearing what they're saying, but in our mind we have made up, made a decision that I'm going to do what I'm big enough to do. Hallelujah. And so there were going to be consequences that were going to occur. My mother's getting upset right now thinking, you ain't going to do nothing. 
And she was like, boy, if I had a belt right now. But so sometimes you have to understand. Amen, Mom, I'm just preaching. That's okay. Amen, you have to understand that, that, that sometimes what the Lord was doing with Israel as he raised up a Savior, he raised up Deborah and Barak uh, to get them deliverance after they had been in the hands of uh, uh, the same group of people for a number of years, even more than the seven years here. But what's interesting is, uh, amen, every time he'd, he'd raise up a Savior, it had to come at a moment when the children of Israel were being oppressed. Sometimes, amen, we have to suffer, amen, oppression because of what we have, choices we have made. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It seems as if now the children of Israel were, and of course, amen, the Bible says the children of Israel did evil. In another place, it said the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, which meant that this was a pattern. This was an ongoing, amen, pattern of behavior. It said they did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord let them go into the hands of the Midianites for seven years. Amen. In the other places, it was a longer period of time. But here's the thing. Sometimes it's not how long you're in a thing, but it's how intense the enemy is against you. Amen. Uh, amen. Any kind of pain and trouble, amen, for even a short period of time, seven years, would seem like a fairly short period of time. But understand what the enemy was doing. The enemy was destroying their whole livelihood. Amen. Their very existence was hanging in the balance. I feel like preaching a little bit right now. Amen. It said it seems as if, amen, they're very, because he was trying to cut off their life source. If they could not produce crops and if they could not bring the harvest in, amen, after a while they were trying to starve them to death. They were cutting off their source of strength. They were cutting off everything. And here's how slick the enemy was. What they would do is they would wait till harvest time, amen, to come. When the harvest was was being brought in, now the enemy would not get them when it was seed planting time. He would get them at harvest time. Hallelujah. Because now, once you have labored over the crops and over all those things and brought them to maturity, now here comes the enemy to launch an attack and take everything that you've worked for. Y'all ain't gonna hear me in here. Hallelujah. So now, the enemy would come up and it would come up and swarm them to such an extent to where now it seems as if they're trying to destroy their very life. He's trying to cut them off. And so, amen, they started hiding out. Here are God's people that were never designed to be hiding out and running from anybody. They were not supposed to be, amen. They all remember in Deuteronomy, he told them he'll make them the head and not the tail. He said, I'll make you always above and never believe but beneath if you're obedient to my word. Hallelujah. But obviously they had been disobedient. And disobedient will have you running and hiding and ducking just trying to survive. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Ah, some of the stuff we got into, amen, we just had to barely hang on and try to survive. Lean on somebody before they fall asleep and say, I'm just hanging in here. Hallelujah. Lean on somebody else and say, I'm scratching and surviving. Hallelujah. Sound like good times in here. Amen, I'm scratching. I'm trying to just make it. I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to just keep on going. It may seem like it's a battle every day just to see if I'm going to make it through this day. Y'all ain't talking back in here. Amen. Have you ever been to the point where it seemed like you just got to struggle? You ain't trying to get through the week. You're just trying to get through the day. Can I hang in here one more day? Am I going to have enough money to get me a little lunch today? Am I going to have something to put on the table today? Am I going to have enough gas to get where I need to go? Y'all ain't talking back to me. Am I going to have anything to survive the day? I was never designed to be like that. But it seems as if amen, there's an enemy has launched an attack against me. Hallelujah. But now you found that as they begin to cry out to God the, the Midianites now would join with the Amalekites and others and would come up against them and make them greatly impoverished. Here are God's people that are living in poverty that are starving. Oh God help me. They are slowly being starved to death. But every now 
and then when you get to that kind of point, you better open up your big mouth and begin to cry out to God. Hallelujah. Lean on some and say, God, let it get bad enough until you cried. You tried to hang in there and act like you wasn't nothing going on and wasn't no drama and wasn't no problem, but the Lord said, I'm going to get you to the point where you're going to have to holler, where you're going to have to be desperate, and you don't care how you look, you don't care what people think, you don't care who's watching, because I'm desperate and I need God to help me. Open your mouth and just holler, help! Mm. Uh, and when God's children uh, begin to cry out and Sister Ruby was talking about it uh, during the worship uh, she said sometimes a baby uh, just needs amen, uh, to be held for a while uh, amen there's a part of us right now uh, you say pastor we're not in this situation uh, but spiritually sometimes that's where we are uh, and it seems like every time we try to get ahead uh, the enemy snatches everything that we have uh, I told you last week that the Lord was going to help you pursue, overtake, and recover. Hallelujah. But what are you pursuing? What are you overtaking? Who are you over there? And what are you going to recover? I'm recovering my joy. I'm getting my peace back. I'm getting my mind back. I'm getting my health back. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. I'm getting the blessing back that God gave me. And I ain't giving up for nobody. And if I got to act the fool, if I got to shout all over you, if I got to look crazy, well, let's go crazy. Open your mouth and let me hear you giving praise. Hallelujah. Uh, I feel some, somebody must be praying. Hallelujah. But it seems now that they begin to holler and cry out to God. And when they cried, the Lord did like any good parent would do. Because the Lord said, before I amen, deliver you, I want to know that you learned the lesson. Holly, y'all ain't going to talk to me. The Lord, amen, rose, raised the prophet up to come to them and say, you know what happened? You know why you're going through what you're going through? Amen, he tells, I'm going to tell you why. He said, I'm the God that brought you up out of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out, and out of all that oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord God, your God. Fear not the other gods, amen, of the Amorites whose land you dwell in. Don't begin to worship these other gods, but you did not obey my voice. In other words, I got your back because you were disobedient. I got your back because you were hard-headed. I jammed you up because you were acting silly. I jammed you up. I held up your blessing because you weren't doing what you were supposed to do. Amen, Elijah. Amen, people of God. Sometimes we got jammed up because we deserve to be jammed up because he didn't want us to die like a fool. Open your mouth and let me hear your blessing. But watch it. But now he said, Amen. I'm going to turn to your deliverance. You have cried out to me, but now I'm getting ready to deliver you. Shake somebody's hand and say, Get ready because things are about to change. Now that was the wrong neighbor. They didn't believe it. Look at another neighbor and say, Neighbor, get ready because something's about to change in your life. Hallelujah. The Lord went out and found found a young man that was threshing in there, wheat behind a wine press. He was using a wine press because it was a smaller thing that he could have contained and also could hide it from the Midianites. I mean, he, he couldn't put it on a big threshing floor because the Midianites were snatching everything. I mean, that's why sometimes if you look back over your life, there are times where the Lord had you innovate. He had gave you good creative ways of trying to survive. Y'all ain't talking back to me. You knew how to make some stuff work. You knew how to stretch some food. You knew how to sew some clothes together. You knew how to put some things together. You know how to put a little cardboard in that shoe when you got a hole in the bottom of it. Hallelujah. Y'all got quiet on me. You know how to make it work. Look at this. I learned how to survive because I had to. But look at what God is doing. He 
he steps in the situation and just announces the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor y'all ain't talking look at the neighbor and say neighbor the Lord is with you hallelujah oh y'all ain't gonna help me I could preach this right here amen even if I don't have any money the Lord is with me if I don't have the education the Lord is with me may not have made the right decisions but the Lord is with me I may be broke but the Lord is with me I may be by myself but the Lord is with me open your mouth and let me hear you shout glory shout glory and he called him fearlessly courageous he's scared of the Midianites but God calls him fearlessly courageous look at someone say God sees you as you ought to be oh y'all didn't catch that see he doesn't see your imperfection and Gideon's response hmm, is like ours well if the Lord is with me why is this happening the prophet told you why it's happening but he says why is this happening and where are all the miracles that our fathers told us about we have we feel there it is God forsaken and let me tell you something. In your walk with him, there are going to be moments where you feel like God has forsaken you. Oh, God, I see it's getting quiet because we don't want to admit that. But there are moments where you don't always feel like you're on the top of the mountain. I don't feel maybe God has changed his mind about me. And Gideon rattles all that off to the Lord, and the Lord eggs him. You have not been ignored until the Lord ignores you. The Lord let him say all of that and said to him, and he looked at him and said, go. Go. No, y'all didn't catch it. He said, go in this thy might. Because you're going to kill them like one man. You're going to defeat your oppressors as if it's one person. Huh? Have I not called you? Have I not commanded you? Look at someone said, there was a call on your life. And God looks at him and says, go ahead and go. Look at someone and say, go. No, 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 no. See, the thing is, we want to sit back and talk about why. And the Lord says, go. Mm -mm. He said, go. In this your might, thy, thy might. Have I not sent you? And he said, wait a minute. How am I going to be the one? Why am I the one you're choosing? I, see now he's going to go throw his resume at the Lord. My family is poor. God knew how much money your family had. And I am the least in my father's house. Watch this. See, sometimes the Lord bypasses what you think about yourself. He has to ignore you and overlook your low self-esteem. He said, my family's poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. If any of us know anything about scripture, you know that that's the perfect kind of person that God wants to use. Because see, if you thought you were great, he going to bypass you. If you think you all that, 
Because see, you'll take credit for stuff that God has done. He said, I ain't talking to that one. The Lord knows how to raise the underdog and make them the top dog. The Lord knows how to take a nobody and make somebody out of them. Hallelujah. Watch this. It says, he says, no, he says, I ain't worried about what your status is. The Lord said, surely I'm going to be with you. So, oh Lord, the Lord just told me, me being with you negates all the negative stuff that ever happened in your life. Well, let me, let me, it's like the Lord, the Lord being with you tips the scale completely in your favor. Because, see, you may not have a whole lot of stuff, but God's with you. So then that just knocks out everything else. It's kind of like why the Cleveland Cavaliers are still competing. Because they really ain't got nobody on the team but LeBron. See, the Lord says, I'm going to be with you. And you will smite the Midianites as one man. Gideon says, Lord, if I found grace, and I'm going to just talk this for a little bit. He said, if I found grace, stay right here and accept my present. Because I need, one thing about Gideon, he always wanted confirmation. And there's nothing wrong with that. He said, if this is really you and this experience is really happening, stay right here. I want to go prepare an offering. And the angel of the Lord, and I said it earlier as we were reading, that this is God that has shown up. And God says, I'll wait. So he goes and gets, he prepares the little young goat, the young goat that's what it says, the kid. And, and unleavened cake and some broth. And he brings it over and puts it on a rock that is right by the Lord. And he says, now, and the Lord, watch this. What I noted was the Lord was giving him instruction on how to offer the proper sacrifice that he wanted. And he says, okay, put the meat and the cake on the rock pour the broth over the top of it. And as he poured, after he poured it over the top, the Lord touched it with the end of his staff. The fire consumed the offering, which let him know that God had approved. Oh, God, help me. That God had accepted his sacrifice. Gideon sees that and realizes, I have been talking to God face to face. <laughs> See, that's why you can't get your, you got to get the right image in your head. When you see angel of the Lord, you don't see big wings and a halo. Because he looked like a regular person. So he's talking to the angel of the Lord and says, and he realized, doesn't realize until after the Lord had consumed the sacrifice and disappeared. But watch this. He disappears, and angel's like, oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. Because I've just seen God face to face. And they, they believed that nobody could see God and live. So, but watch, and the Lord just spoke this to me. After he is shaken because he realized he's seen God and thinks he's going to die. Now, the Lord had disappeared physically out of his sight, but his voice was still here. And his voice said, fear not, you're not going to die. And Gideon built an altar and said, this place is Jehovah Shalom. Because he said, peace be unto you. Oh, watch this. 
the Lord. Lean on, wave your hand over your neighbor's head and say, Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is your peace. You're saying, Pastor, what does this have to do with it? You didn't get to the good part, Pastor. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the good part. But I'm going to make you stand up for it. I'll just talk to you. Not yet. Gideon did something after that. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And he went and pulled down the altars of Baal and destroyed them. Because the Lord had talked to him. So now Gideon is ready for a radical move of God. Oh, y'all got to hear this. Because this, that act could have gotten him killed. In fact, that's how crazy they were. They were so upset with him about destroying the altar of Baal that you went in and destroyed the altar of Baal and then Gideon's father said, wait a minute now. You about to try to kill my son for pulling down an idol? Yeah, yeah, see, because see, sometimes you can be so messed up that you start calling wrong right and right wrong. And you get outraged over foolishness. Amen. You'll get upset about something that you shouldn't even be dealing with in the first place. Watch this. So Gideon began to prepare for battle. And what the Lord did with them was, he says, and Gideon gathers up an army of about 22,000 men. And he's thinking, okay, I got a, got a pretty good crew, even though you know it's 22,000. They have a multitude. Their army is, can't be counted. But I got 22,000 men. And the voice of the Lord comes to him. The word of the Lord comes to him. He says, you know, that's too many folk. Okay, now I'm meddling with you. He said, you got too many folk for me to get the glory. Because see, if y'all go and win with the 22,000, you're going to low-key take some of the credit for it. He said, you got too many. He said, tell you what, tell everybody that's fearful and unbelieving to go home. Tell everybody that's scared to go home. Guess how many left? 12,000. Y'all didn't catch that. See, some of the folks, I got some, I got them, my crew is with me. <laughs> Over half of your crew, they're scared and don't want to go home. Amen. Half your crew, over half your crew ain't really with you. Some of them are scared and hanging on to see how bad it gets so they can take pictures. <laughs> it's just, whoo. I, I, go ahead, girl. Go ahead, girl. I'm filming. Are you, are you videoing? Yeah, I'm videoing. <laughs> 12,000 left. So now you're down to 10,000. And you think, okay, okay, over half my crew is left. So this must be the, gr the group. And the Lord said, you know, that's still too many. Huh? Still too many for me to get the glory. Look at someone and say, God's going to get the maximum glory out of your situation. Touch the other day and say, God's going to get the glory out of this. So that's why he lets it get real crazy so he can get maximum glory. Hallelujah. Watch this. He says, take them down by the river and I'll designate who's going with you. And of course, you know the story. They went down and he said, the ones that lapped, well, the 300 that lapped water like a dog, those are mine. 300? Y'all hear me. 300? From 22,000 to 300. And Gideon still got reassurance. As you're standing. Come on, let's go. 
as you're standing. The Lord told Gideon, he says, you know, this is the night before they were going to go to battle. He says, well, if you're still having doubts, which he was, I'm not, I didn't even deal with the part that Gideon laid a fleece before the Lord. He laid a fleece, he said, now, Lord, if this is you, then make the fleece dry and the ground wet. He woke up the next morning, fleece was dry, ground was wet. He said, Lord, I, I know I'm tripping right now, but if you could just help me a little bit more, um, I'm going to put the fleece back out there and make the fleece wet and the ground dry. The Lord did both of those things. How many of y'all know the Lord been helping you all along? You, you didn't, you had, you need another confirmation to get you that. So then, with his 300 the night before, he says, um, take with you one of the men and go down to the camp of the Midianites. I just want you to hear what they're talking about. And they went down and were, uh, were ear hustling <laughs> on, that's eavesdropping, Mom. I just, you know, <laughs> ear hustling <laughs> on the Midianites camp. And two of the soldiers, uh, one of them was saying, you know, man, I had the craziest dream last night. This huge wheel of barley was rolling down through our camp and knocking and destroying everything. And the other guy said, man, that ain't nobody but Gideon and the sword of the Lord and Gideon. In other words, because that's about to happen. Look at someone and say, it's about to go down. <laughs> so the Lord let him hear that the enemy knew that they already had the victory. Grab those hands. See, the 300 were going to be willing and obedient enough to grab a pitcher, a light. In other words, they were, had a lantern with a glass around it. And what they would do it, were going to do was they had to have a trumpet. And it didn't say that all 300 of them had all of the stuff, but some of them had different elements of it. And what these 300 were going to do was at the right si at the right time on Gideon's signal, they were going to holler, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And the way that they were set up, they fanned out the 300 to where it looked like it was 100 over here, and there was 100 over here, and 100. So it almost looked like if you're at nighttime that, oh, man, they're, we're surrounded by thousands of troops. And what they would do is they would blow the trumpet, break the pitcher, so you had trumpet sounding, you had shouting, trumpet sounding, and glass breaking, and the fire. And you heard them saying, the sword of the Lord and Gideon. And the Lord, the scripture says, discomforted them. They began to kill each other. Y'all ain't heard me. And Gideon and them just had to run in there and take all the spoil and chase them down. Amen. And defeat them, which he did. Squeeze that hand and say, the Lord is with you. Mm. And the Lord has given you peace to your troubled mind. Amen. Jehovah Shalom. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Thank you for the word today, Lord. It reassures us that you have not forgotten us. You have not forsaken us. You have not neglected us. Lord, sometimes we have to come and just confess and we have to repent. Sometimes our own choices moved us away from your will. Our own choices have turned us around. And Lord, we thank you because you spared us. 
You gave, you're the God of a second chance and a third chance and a 300th chance. We bless you because you, you didn't give up on us. You sent us a word. You sent us encouragement. And Lord, we thank you because you are with us. You showed up, Lord. Hallelujah. Right when we cried. And Lord, we bless you for that. Now, Lord, somebody's on the edge today. Somebody needed a word that let them know that God has not forgotten them. They needed a word to know that you're still here. Lord, somebody needs peace right now. Their mind is troubled. They're anxious. They're worried. They're almost at a point of despair. But you sent us a word today. Save us. Heal us. Deliver us. Set us free. Strengthen us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God glory. <laughs> Ministry team, I need you to come quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody needs to just come now. Amen. Amen. We bless God. Just come. Amen. <laughs> just come. Amen. It's important for us to understand that the Lord has a way of calling us. The Lord has a way of pulling us out of where we've been. Trouble doesn't last always. Amen. And the Lord has fixed it, so he's going to get maximum glory out of your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though you may feel God forsaken, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So be encouraged. Somebody needs to come and say, I need these ministers to pray over me and believe God with me in Jesus' name. Whenever the Lord says peace, there'll be peace. Peace, oh, 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 peace. Whenever the Lord says peace, there'll be peace. Peace, oh, 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 peace. Whenever the Lord says peace oh lord there'll be peace oh lord peace oh oh peace whenever the lord says peace oh lord yeah there'll be peace hallelujah be 
peace. Hallelujah, there's peace. Oh, 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 peace. In the midst of my trial, there will be peace. Yeah, there will be peace. Hallelujah. Oh, peace. Oh, 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 peace. Whenever the Lord says peace, there'll be peace. Peace. Oh, oh, peace. No matter what I'm going through, there is peace. Hallelujah, there'll be peace. Oh, peace. Oh, oh, peace. Whenever the Lord says peace in my mind, in my home, hallelujah. Yes, there'll be peace. Yeah, Lord, there's peace. Oh, oh, peace. Whenever the Lord says peace, I declare it right now that will there will be peace. I declare it right now that will be peace. Oh, oh, peace. Whenever the Lord God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, ministry team. Give God praise all over the building. Uh, I want to make a few announcements before we go. Um, on There will be no Bible study in Palmdale tomorrow night uh, because of the holiday. All right? Amen. But there will be Palmdale Bible study on Wednesday night. Wednesday night at 7.30 at our Palmdale location. If you have friends or family that are up there and all of our members that are up there, uh, please let them know. And we're letting them know that we will have Bible study on Wednesday night at 7.30 in Palmdale. We will also have prayer at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night right here. And that will be followed by our Bible study uh, on Tuesday night at 7.30. Amen. Our Bible study series is entitled, Have a Talk with God. And the Lord has been blessing us in a marvelous way throughout this series. Amen. I got uh, five people are happy about it, but the uh, Lord is blessing. Um, it's really helping us in terms of our uh, effectiveness and, and uh, the authority that we have in praying. Amen. And the Lord is blessing us and helping our prayer lives. I hope somebody's being blessed by it. Amen. Now, we have a few special announcements. Uh, once again, um, throughout the month of June, and we, I'm not sure, I don't think we're going to be starting on June 1st, but I mean the first Saturday, Sunday in June. But uh, Calvary Baptist Church is going to be uh, using our facility. Uh, for their Sunday morning worship service, well, they're actually their midday service on Sunday at 12 noon. They will be here in our sanctuary at 12 noon. Now, that means that we will be out of here. We're looking at 1130. I'm not talking about me winding up. I'm talking about we're out of here. We're done by 1130. And, of course, you'll have time to hang out. But what we're going to be doing is we want to make sure that they have, you know, the sanctuary. They're renting it from us for a few weeks. They're getting their sanctuaries and going through a renovation. So um, they need a, a place to be able to worship. And uh, since we're right here, it may, we're good neighbors. Uh, so we want to make sure that um, they have a place to worship uh, throughout the month of June. So... Uh, with that in mind, I just want to make sure you understand that if I'm going to be, we're going to be done by 1130, that means pastor going to be up to preach earlier because he's going to get out of Palmdale earlier. So if you'd like to hear the full message, 
You need to get here in time for praise and worship. So, because we have an incredible praise and worship team. And we have one of the baddest bands in the land. So um, you need to be here to enjoy that. Uh, but also, uh, if you, those of you that like to come in <laughs> at around 11-ish, if you come and start coming in throughout the month of June, around 11-ish, pass is going to be in third, perhaps fourth gear. So, <laughs> so you're going to have to get here a little early because we're going to be getting out a little bit earlier uh, than normal. Amen. All right, we have two things we want to announce. One, uh, uh, Pastor Robert Rush, uh, a friend of ours, and, and he's uh, doing a conference uh, in the summit, the Upside Down Summit. And it's going to be held June 22nd and 23rd in, at the Embassy Suites in Valencia. They have some incredible preachers and, and teachers coming. Uh, Brian Meadows, a young man I met a few years ago out of Atlanta. Timothy Alden, another young man that's actually been here several years ago. Uh, Fred Hodge, even Michael Fisher, Kevin Cross Jr., Tamara Joy Scott. They're going to be all up there at the summit. We have the flyers out in the lobby. I wanted to make sure I announced that. And uh, if you're interested, um, you can pick up and get the information uh, on the flyer from out in the lobby. Also, we have a very special project uh, that uh, Brother Anthony, Sister Camilla, uh, and uh, Tamala, and Candace are all undertaking the young adults. Amen. I, I threw young Anthony in that young adult crew, even though, you know, clearly. Anyway, <laughs> just messing with you, man, because I love you. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, they're doing something. They started a project where they're, they've been going out, and they, they, they've been going out and helping uh, some of the homeless uh, folk and by giving them some toiletries and items and I thought that was such a marvelous idea and I wanted to take it church wide and so what they need uh, they have a list of items that they need and we want you to bring these items of course unopened and you get travel size package you know you know deodorant uh, they need travel size toothpaste mouthwash toothbrushes deodorant lotion shampoo soap feminine hygiene products. Also, uh, socks. Amen, you never, uh, you'll never know how valuable some nice, clean, dry socks can be. But I, I want, we're gonna try to put together some kind of flyer, but, but if you can, um, this week, and, and just, just when you can, and when you think about it, let's start bringing some items together, let's be, so, because they go out, uh, we're going to be out in the lo uh, over in the lobby. Okay, amen. There's going to be a barrel out in the lobby. I want us to fill that barrel up. Amen. Y'all going to help me do it. We're going to fill that barrel up. And uh, they've been going out, and I don't know how often they're going out, but they've been going out periodically into the community and just blessing people. Y'all not hear me. And sometimes it's a lot of stuff that, you know, you know, we, you know, we have the big campaigns, but this is really uh, something that can really help uh, just, just be able to, this is really showing the love of God, Christ with, to people. Amen. So let's do something wonderful. Again, travel size toothpaste, mouthwash, toothbrushes, deodorant, lotion, shampoo, soap, feminine hygiene products, and socks. Amen. And if you need any information, see, see Brother Anthony, uh, Sister Camilla. Uh, also, you can see uh, Sister Candace. Amen. And see them. Amen. Hey, there, and Candace and Tamla are back there, too. See them and uh, make sure that you are bringing what they need. And we want to fill the barrel up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Um, all right. I believe that is it. The announcements, I think. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. Amen. Got a couple of birthdays in the house today. Sister Allie and Sister Sharon. Uh, birthdays are today. Amen. 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 Happy birthday to you both. 
Amen. Um, you know, May birthdays are powerful. You know, even though all of them aren't Tauruses, but it's all good. You know, uh, you know, you're in the month of May, so you're, you know, you're right on top. Who, brother Osbed too? What? You got you got a year younger too? My goodness, Amen. Give God a hand, praise, brother Osbed. I, amen. See, you made him turn all red and everything. <laughs> God bless you. I thank God for all of you, and I appreciate all of you. Uh, happy birthday, uh, and many, many more uh, to each and every one of you. All right, as you're standing, as you're standing, hold that offering up in the air and say, I'm blessed. Because the Lord is with me. In Jesus' name. You're in the hands of the ushers and the deacons. Please bring those cards. I want to pray for you this week. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Glory, give him glory, give him glory. Oh, God's gonna get the glory out of this. Glory out of it. 